Hi guys, and welcome to Piano and Keyboard Artist, where we discuss the artists related to pianos, keyboards, and synthesizers. And we're standing here on the River Thames with my good friend and regular guest on the show, Mr. Brian Griffin. Brian, how are you? Well, it's good to see you yet again, Vaughan. Uh, I, I feel pretty good, but I feel very serious at the same time. Well, guys, we putting ourselves at risk here because the tide is actually going to come in, but we thought we wanted to just film the... Um, uh, we, we want to get a, a bit more production values into the videos. So we're going to take the ferry, as you can see, which is behind Brian there, and we're going to take it over the water, and we're going to go up into one of the skyscrapers there to pay homage to Black Celebration because that's what we're talking about today, Brian. Black Celebration? Certainly is, Vaughn. That's what we're talking about. And that was the last album cover you did for the famous it Depeche Mode? It was the last one. And uh, yeah, really the last one. Okay guys, well we're gonna jump out here before the tide gets us. We're gonna jump in on the ferry and go over and we'll see you on the other side of the river. Right, here we are, upstairs in the 38th floor, is it Brian? 38. And uh, as I said, we've, uh, we're, play we're paying homage to the Black Celebration album. You know? um, it was, the, the image of the Black Celebration album was a, it was a skyscraper, and we're going to talk about how that came about. But before we do that, Brian, I've got some video footage I want to show you here. And um, several years ago, Depeche Mode re-released um, a lot of their albums, which, which they called the Remasters series. And what they did was they remastered all the albums and every, every album had like a little documentary made with it. And I don't know if you recall, Brian, but they did interview you for the series of documentaries. This must have been 10, 12 years ago. I don't know if you can recall. Oh, yeah, I can recall. I can recall them uh, uh, doing Speak and Spell, I think. Yes, and they, uh, I think they interviewed you. They interviewed you for all the album covers, actually. They did all of them, did they? Wow, my memory fails me. Even Black Celebration. Yes. And that. I've never seen it. You haven't, you haven't seen it? I've never seen it, no. Well, I've got, some, I've got some news for you because I've actually got a snippet of that uh, documentary here. So, as I say, guys, Brian's obviously been so busy, he hasn't actually seen this. So. Um, we're going to actually do kind of like a reaction video here. I'm going to be playing Brian the footage right now. This documentary was an hour long, but obviously I'm not going to play Brian the whole footage. I'm just going to play him the three minutes, which relates to him. Now in this three minutes, it's really, um, it was Martin Atkins who was the designer of the sleeves, um, really just commenting on what he felt or what went through his mind when he saw Brian's work 
for the first time. So um, let's pop the headphones on you, Brian, and uh, we're going to gauge your reaction on that. Right, Brian, so um, you've got the headphones on now. I'm going to give you my laptop, yeah? I don't want to sound like a neo-Nazi, but we kind of admired the way those big banners used to hang on kind of German uh, Nazi headquarters you see in, like, the 30s and the, during the war. They'd hang these big banners with a swastika on, and they'd come down the whole side of the building. And Daniel and I had talked about doing something like that with these logos. And so I talked to Daniel about doing it with a real building. And then the next thing I know, Brian made this model. To his surprise, was it? It was probably about this big on a tabletop. And it was supposed to represent this, like, 30-story Italian futurist building. And it had these, like, bits of ribbon hanging down the side. And I think we might have had a little fan there to try and blow them. But because of the scale, it just looked ridiculous. I, you know, I don't know whether he, what he was smoking that day, but I just thought it looked terrible. You couldn't and smoke. Kind of a bit of a disaster, you just couldn't smoke. You couldn't smoke, you couldn't drink. Photography doesn't work. And the schedules were deadly tight. But I actually went to Hansa, I think, that time... Um, to show him the photographs. And, sounds uh, such a hero, doesn't he, Martin Atkins? Such a, for such an average That's designer, he sounds like a hero. Fucking hell, I think the verdict is we're going to try stretching it. Um, we're going to try moving up the tire, making it a bit thinner. And the middle of the picture is going to be glossy. Um, with the sort of distorted upper effect. And the, uh, I like David, actually. Man. Very fond of David. Strong. I personally think that'll look stronger than the last day. I don't know that's the personal opinion, obviously. But then again, the old democracy. Mm. But as the near democracy starts to fade. Exactly. And the schedule is starting to be met. It was kind of a case of how can we save this? So we kind of made a big deal out of the logos. We actually did quite a tasty cover. Strange we, now, isn't it? We embossed, it was probably they don't expensive. have to save it, really, we do they? embossed all these logos out of the... It's Martin Atkins, uh, a zilch. Inch. Package. Ability, you Cole know, boasting. Really famous art director now. <laughs> I mean, he's got all these symbols and these black drapes. Such a little boy, yeah. And the photograph we kind of trimmed really down so it was more like a, <laughs> I mean, a strip like of that. colour and wow. Um, and it kind of looked like a Martin, like a you were fing crap. Shut up. Piece of a building. Um, and you couldn't tell whether it was a model or no, just a bad Well, please cut the swear words out. <laughs> and so, it's doing um, my head in watching him. I think in the He's end, so of, the cover was kind of successful. I don't think it That's was. That's right, Martin. Successful Due to your ability. Cover at all, actually. When you compare this, say, with a broken frame, it's sort of like. Phew. Absolutely. If you compare it with the stuff we've been doing, and the ruination started. The, the, the poison started to infiltrate into, I don't know, um, a team, or not a team in a sense, me, Daniel, the band, and the poison started to seep in, not necessarily through just Martin, but other people were getting really interested as well. I mean, Depeche Mode were getting really big. Other people wanted to be part of it. Because you have to try and look back, you know, way back to Speak and Spell where it was just a little shop in Seymour Place where I would talk to Daniel and the young boys would come in with Vince and it had grown into this monster that people wanted a piece of. And eventually they had it, like uh, Anton took over, Martin started to be very strong. Martin wasn't talented enough. He was a very, very average designer. Anton was just a, a photographer. You know, all right, photographer had worked on the enemy, learned how to use a certain technique that made pictures look very grainy, and he, he did well, you know, had good luck on him. But he w wasn't really an artist, and he still isn't. And Martin was never really an artist. He, there were some great artists that came out of Manchester, some great designers. I mean, Peter Saville was the great one, as, as you, everyone knows, with New Order and Joy Division. Martin was second division. And they started to infiltrate and started to sort of eat away and destroy things. And I think I started to get fed up. 
But then again, you know, the 80s were really crazy at that point in time. Everything was happening. My studio was a crazy place. Everyone was coming around. Bands were pouring in. My workload was incredibly high. Um, the finances were increasing at a rapid rate. My earning power was going up. I was becoming more and more famous. And maybe, you know, uh, I lost myself a little bit as well. So we were all like completely filled with the fever of the 80s in some way or another. And I'd worked with some of the great designers, um, you know, and, and uh, so I was spoiled. Uh, I'd never worked with any great photographers. <laughs> uh, there were some great ones, but uh, I never came across them, really. Um, but it just fell out of my hands at that point in time, and it would never come back again until only when I lose myself, which Daniel kindly offered me 12 years later. A video ended up with me leaving photography in the end. You know, I started to, to have enough. You know, I'd go incredibly more well known. Uh, lots of other people were even getting more heavily involved. Marketing meetings were, were have would happen instead of just making things happen through your talent spontaneously. You would just create something. It was very magical, and then the magic was starting to dissipate and disappear. And, oh, I don't know, I didn't really like it as much anymore. And I didn't like working alongside some of the people that were thrown alongside me. I didn't request it. Brian, thanks very much. It's really good to hear you speaking so sort of honestly and passionately about this. And I think I'm... I myself as a fan and a lot of my subscribers and I'm sure a lot of Depeche Mode fans throughout the world don't really know this part of your story. This is kind of like Brian Griffin's untold story. And if you think of as a successful formula, how we go from speak and spell, then we have um, a broken frame, construction time again, some great reward, you know, all those great album covers. And, and this was always my question is, why did they... I don't want to say get rid of Brian, but why did they stop using you, Brian? And obviously, there were, you know, there were a lot of factors, as you say. Um, they were becoming quite big. A lot of people were trying to validate themselves by sort of like getting in on the party. And you being a sort of a dignified, uh, non-pushy type of person, you kind of probably just thought, oh, well, I'm not going to fight for this kind of thing. But as I say, this is, you, this is really your opportunity to kind of say exactly what happened. So um, on the Martin Atkins thing, um, do you think he was possibly given far too... You know, we, we don't want to pin the blame on Martin Atkins or anyone in particular, but do you think he was given too much free reign or, or say in what happened? I definitely do. Uh, I think it should have been the case of something like uh, uh, a broken frame where... Uh, you know, truly be left alone. And then he would just do something, you know, with my photograph. That's what should have happened. But it didn't, it wasn't only Martin. Although at that time, a lot of bands were coming towards me. But the art in album cover photography was starting to go out of it. It started to become more of a marketing exercise. And people thought of me as being an arty, an arty photographer. Some people were annoyed about that. Some record company executives were really annoyed about that. And, like, I lost a few bands because of this reason. I mean, I lost Lena Lovitch, who I thought was extraordinary talent in the early 80s. I lost Echo in the Bunnymen to Anton. Um, and I lost a few more because I was regarded as being too arty. It's through history now, or well, looking back historically, rather, it seems that wasn't the case, really, in the sense that I was too arty. Uh, this is being proved to be a false, um, a false assumption. And um, I quite like what's happening now. I quite like seeing people with... In fact, I'm shocked. I mean, someone last week only bought a really, really big print of a broken frame, you know, my black and white one. You mean the um, Sorry, Black Celebration? Black Celebration, excuse me. They have bought many uh, broken frame big ones. But this one, and it shocked me. I'm shocked with this, this image. I went up to my printers. It was hand printed and I looked at it. And I could not believe how good it looked. Because I didn't know if it did back then. With all the sort of negativity like being poured upon me. 
and and me losing the band, you know, I started to feel really negative about this particular album. Although people think it's a great album, musically, I never really felt very strongly about it because I'd lost the band with it. And But now it's it's like regenerated my enthusiasm. When I looked at a big print of it and saw how I'd worked it, how I'd worked it on the five-inch by four-inch camera, it was done on a big plate camera, how I'd taken things out of focus, how I'd used reflections and everything to build up uh, a feeling there. But then again, I, uh, things were really happening in my studio. My, my model maker was starting, can we say, to be a bit uh, heavily influenced by certain things, and I was losing him a little bit. He was a great, great uh, set designer, model maker. And also my life circumstance was changing. So I have to pour in uh, many factors. But having said that, having seen a big print of this image, I didn't realise how good it really was. And it's other people that have taken away how good it was from me feeling that way, you know. Now, we've actually got that image here, which we're going to unveil to you guys soon. It's a black and white version of the iconic Black Celebration artwork, but in a way you've never seen it before. It's in a never-been-seen-before black and white uh, version. But before we do that, Brian and I are going to have a chat about the actual making of this album cover. Right, Brian, so tell us about the um, the actual cover. Um, what was your thought? Because Martin said that he 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 had the idea of having these big like banners hanging off a building, and obviously because of practical reasons, you couldn't hang banners off a real building. So you had to build a model. So you had your model maker build a model. Is that how it happened? Yeah, there was a model maker I'd worked with uh, since the beginning of the eighties. Uh, we built light machines together. We built sets, models, everything, and. Uh, I gave him the opportunity of building this this model. Um, also, um, I shot this particular shot on um, on a five four camera, which is uh, five inches by four inches in old English measurement. And I'm trying to work out why I did that. And I must have done that because you can play around with it, you know. And so it takes things out of focus, brings things in focus. You change the focal plane. Or, you know, what it focuses upon the camera, you know. And um, I obviously wanted to play with that. And I've since, by ref looking back at our new print, I've seen that I've used reflections and I've used glass and all sorts of things in the shot, which I, I'm trying to understand why I did that as well. What was the creative idea? Was it that I was looking into somewhere and the building was behind me. It was reflected behind me. Because you can see parts of my studio in there, actually, just delicately, the very abstract elements of it. And also, I was trying to figure out, which I still don't know the reason for it, why have I got tulips in the photograph? That's a really crazy thing to do. If I can quickly interject you there, um, it's quite funny because obviously Anton took over swiftly after you, and he, he sort of done and i think he's still doing the artwork and uh, photography these days but the tulips in that black celebration uh cover i'm really and i've got no reason to say this but i really feel that anton got that idea for the violator cover you know where they took the you remember the violets it was it was that yeah it was that black black with a rose and i've got no reason to say that but i just i feel that subconsciously that may have planted the idea into anton's head i'm not sure i really can't can't remember why did I do that. Obviously, I was um, really trying to make, well, I'm going to say this now, it might not be totally true. I was trying to make an average idea look really good because the idea, if you look back at the history of the album covers we were doing, all of a sudden Martin Atkins or whoever comes in with like a building with a banner on it. I mean, I didn't really like that idea. I mean, I know exactly what he was talking about. I've explored ger the history of German art, and unfortunately, I've looked at all what the horrible fascists did and everything, as well as the Russians and everything. I, 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 I have explored the history of art. I know it really, really well. And uh, I'm, all of a sudden, he wants a, a building in it. And when you think back at what we've, what we've achieved, you know, it seems such a crazy idea. Maybe I was annoyed 
essentially with the idea. I'm terribly like that sometimes. I'm not perhaps accept everything that I don't like, you know, and if I don't like something, then I make my presence felt. And I probably I wanted to try and erode or, you know, subtract from the idea, overtake it and obliterate it to a certain extent and make it something else. This is just an assumption now after all these years. No, as I say, um, it will be interesting how the how the you know how they start from the idea that they've come from and, and how they end up to the final result. So, you know, whether it be the band or Daniel um, that decided they wanted a building, um, and then, you know, was it Martin Atkins who sort of said in that documentary that he wanted the idea of this like building with a big you know symbols hanging down the side, and then they went to you to help make this happen. Is that how you think it happened? Really, you're absolutely right, Vaughan. <laughs> Uh, what I think truly happened was that Martin Atkins had got a complete vision of what the album cover should look like, which basically, when you're giving it a photographer like me, just destroys the magic. You want to give it a, a, a photographer who's technically very, very, uh, uh, very equipped that can execute a designer's idea immaculately. I was the wrong person to give it to. And I realised probably in all honesty, that I truly didn't like the idea whatsoever. But it came to me almost like a fait accompli. While the early album covers was round a table discussing, was with the band, we were discussing ideas, throwing good ideas away, bad ideas away, coming back with the best idea which we went along with. All of a sudden, all this structure was being destroyed. What had made created the magic was being eroded and taken away. And it's quite sort of uh, ironic as well, you know, because you look at Depeche Mode, how they started off the, as these like eyed, eyes wide open pretty boys. And now we get to Black Celebration, which is a very dark claustrophobic album. It's funny how the atmosphere kind of turned dark and claustrophobic. And, you know, you kind of, I won't say you were thrown off the project. I mean, but they just stopped using you after that for whatever reasons. And as you say, there was nothing sinister I personally feel, and I've got no reason to say this because I wasn't there, but I just think that if I look at, you know, with Depeche Mode, they, they seem to, with every album, they always seem to move on to a different producer. And I personally feel that it was nothing sinister that they didn't use you anymore. It was probably just, they probably just felt, okay, we've gotten to a point, we've used Brian, we've had a good run, let's move on to, to Anton. But the interesting thing is, having said that, is I'm surprised that they're still using Anton because he obviously still resonates with them. And you know, I, I, as I said in a previous video, I think we need to get Gareth Jones to do the next album and you to do the photography for the next one. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why they've stuck with him all this time. Um, it doesn't seem a great reason. Probably it's a good, strong working relationship and it flows along, you know, without any problems. Because people can be a bit like that. Um, things change rapidly. I can't think of one really strong Depeche Mode album, actually. Violator was okay. But everything else has been very throwaway. And it shouldn't be so. I mean, like the album covers we did at the very beginning could have carried on and got better and better and better if the team had stayed strong from the beginning. Like they stayed with Anton now for many years. They could have stayed with me with album covers for many years. And they, I wouldn't have got bored. Uh, they would have probably got even stronger. It's such a shame that happened. But I understand why bands must move on and how they feel they must. They must bring changes in. Well, you know, Brian, you've left your legacy and you certainly got nothing to prove. Uh, I, but I, I, I was really interested. I thought to myself, if, if you had carried on, it would be interesting to see what the music for the Masters album cover would have looked like had you done it. Oh, God, yeah. I remember that cover. Oh, my, oh my. that was like so bad. You know, so, so and it was needless. It was needless to be that bad. It should never have been anywhere near that bad. Because with me, okay, putting another hat on, probably as Depeche Mode got bigger and bigger and bigger, they could possibly have commissioned even, can we say, with far more finance, you know, to make great stuff. And maybe bad stuff was made for them with uh, really top finance. I don't know. <laughs> It should never have been, because we started fairly, fairly minimally financially with Depeche Mode and created magic. 
Well, Magic, you're absolutely right. And um, I do think um, if we look at how the first album covers were done, it was really sort of like we have this idea, Brian, he has the idea and you run with it. Whereas by the time we get to Black Celebration, as you say, things have gotten very serious now. A lot of people are getting involved. A lot of, you know, Depeche Mode are essentially a huge name now and a huge band and the stakes are a lot higher. So by the time we get to Black Celebration, it's not the beginning, beginning approach where it was like, Brian, we have this idea. They're now coming to you and saying, Brian, this is the idea. You know, they're kind of telling you what needs to happen. So effectively tying your hands. So you probably had not much creative, like with the other albums, you had a lot of creative freedom. They said, we want, you know, a, girl, a woman in a field or, or, or we want a construction worker on a, on a, on a mountain or we want a, a, a couple in front of a, um, a factory. So they kind of told you that and they left the rest of your imagination. Whereas the Black Celebration, it was kind of like, it was kind of, they were too detailed and specific in what they wanted, thereby tying your hands. Is that right? Absolutely right. I was the wrong man. Eventually, I became the wrong man. It's rather unfortunate. But with Black Celebration, I became the wrong man for them at that point in time. And, you know, guys, obviously spending a lot of time with Brian, and it's, 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 it's quite sad to see we've come to the end of the Depeche Mode album review series, but never mind, there are many other things we can talk about. But it is interesting to see how, you know, when we started with the first Speak and Spell, as I said, it was a real eyes wide open, a really friendly, innocent way, and then how it got really serious. And I think, Brian, I think from what I can tell from, this, from what I've got from these interviews with you is um, in order to get the best from Brian Griffin, someone needs to go to you and say, here's the idea and just leave it to you. And that's when the magic happens. I think if someone comes to you and says, here's the idea, but this, but this, but this, and by imposing too many limitations on you, I think that's not going to allow you to do what you do. And hence the reason why, you're, you know, the, 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 the other album covers before this were so magical was because they didn't impose any limitations on you. And of course, as you said on that documentary, the Black Celebration album cover was quite disappointing. But in retrospect and looking now as history, it's an iconic cover. And, um, but your favorite would still be, what was your favorite? Was the Construction Time Again? Yeah, construction time again, definitely. I mean, there's so many photographs attached to that photo shoot that are really powerful. And um, even with a broken frame, there was one amazingly powerful image. And then two or three good ones. But with construction time again, we probably had four or five really fantastic images. That was the great photo shoot, yeah. Right, Brian, there's one more question I want to ask you before we unveil the uh, poster print. Um, the embossed covers that they released, was that, any, that was nothing to do with you. That was all the, because one of my subscribers said, please talk about the embossed covers, the embossed covers. Nothing to do with, embossing was nothing to do with me. There you have it. The embossing was nothing to do with Brian Griffin. Right, Brian, before we unveil this iconic poster print, is there anything else you would like to say that comes to you, your mind about the Black Celebration photo shoot? No, I mean, I'd just like to say the viewers, thank you for sharing, you know, um, all, our, uh, um, all our covers that we've discussed here on the Vaughan George channel. I hope you've enjoyed them all because it's been great fun for me. And I look forward to returning and talking about all sorts of things. And Vaughan? Brian, it's been an absolute pleasure. A pleasure. Now, it's, it's quite emotional. As I said, a lot of people have said, oh, no, we've come into the end of Black Celebration. That means all the Brian Griffin covers are you know, uh, done. And I'm saying, guys, just go onto BrianGriffin.com and actually look at everything that he's, that Brian has photographed. Uh, BrianGriffin.co.uk, I beg your pardon. Um, go onto BrianGriffin.co.uk and you will see how many things Brian has done. So you'll be happy to know we're going to be talking about Echo and the Bunningman. Uh, we'll be talking about Midge Ur, Ultravox, John Fox, a lot more to come. Right, Mr. Griffin, I'm going to pose a toast to you. Thank you, Warren. Celebrate our journey. Great to celebrate our journey, Vaughn. Absolutely. Okay, so here it is, guys. I'm going to unveil something which is, this is a bit of history, really. Um, as you know, Brian has made a series of poster prints available to the Vaughn George channel. Um, and a lot of you had asked for the Black Celebration one. Now, Brian, in his infinite wisdom, decided instead of giving people the color the color one that we're used to brian has decided to unveil ta-da i'll let you do the honors this is the this is the approval poster print which we got from our printers and brian is going to unveil that now 
And this is the one we are now rolling out on the oh, upside down <laughs> on the Vaughan Jewel shelf. Now, um, I now I don't know how good the lighting is in here. I'll do another. We'll do an yeah. We'll do another sort of. Um, we're going to do another little commercial um, in in which we'll run through these in, in more detail. But basically, what this is is, guys, this is a this is the album cover in a black and white version. So this has never ever been seen before. Um, and Brian, actually, you did actually sell one of the because, guys, this is a poster, not to be confused with the actual original prints that Brian does. And Brian, I believe you sold a, an original black and white print of this just last week. Yeah, to um, to a great Depeche Mode fan whose whole lounge or living room is framed with my posters, and he bought a uh, A1 size. Oh, yeah. He bought like uh, a big one. Uh, he's a man that lives in Romania, and he's a great fan and uh, supports me totally. And he is so pleased with his print. I'd like to say to him over the microphone, thank you, Christian, for your support. Absolutely. Well, guys, listen, we've now got this as part of the um album collection now as you know we've got we've now got this now brings it up to seven images which we're doing in the Vaughan George Brian Griffin Depeche Mode album collection and what these are is these are the most accurate and most honest reproduction of Brian's work ever of, of you know because they're straight from the these, these are straight from the negatives Brian is that right yeah they are straight from the negative yeah yes yeah, so the, this isn't like a, the, the color album that's been turned into black and white these are straight from the negatives and um, guys, these are 31 by 31 centimeters uh, in, in, in size. Um, so they're the same size as a vinyl album sleeve. Now, what makes this offer exclusive and different to any offer in the world is the fact that when you purchase one of these from the Vaughan George channel, they are personally signed by Brian Griffin in, in himself. And Brian's going to demonstrate that now. He's actually going to sign this and I'm going to give this away to one of my subscribers and we're going to decide how to do that in a later episode because Brian, we are going to do a, um, we're going to do a YouTube video, a Q and a with Brian Griffin. So Brian is going to just sign that. I think Brian, if you would just, yeah, just put your rock and roll signature there, <laughs> your rock and roll signature. Wow. <laughs> You've done that before. So as you can see, this is a, this is an example of um, one of the, poster prints you can purchase from the Vaughan George channel here. And what Brian does is he signs them all individually, but any of the prints that, that or any of the poster prints that you buy here, Brian will personally dedicate them to you. And I know with Christmas coming now, you could put a dedication there. Like um, it's very popular. Some people would, for instance, you'd have black celebration written over there, or you could have a, you could have a dedicated to your Friend, dear John, lots of love, Brian Griffin. So, guys, get in touch with me through through the channel. I'm going to leave links at the bottom of this, and you can get in touch there. These are, as I say, exclusive, and you you can't buy these anywhere else in the world. But yeah, through the Vaughan George channel. And once again, Brian, I'm so grateful that you have made this offer exclusively available to my channel Pleasure. and to my um, subscribers. And as I said, the reason Brian did this was because I'm so grateful to him. I keep saying that was when Brian first came onto my channel people contacted him and wanted to buy his original prints. Now, his original prints are, are a lot more costly, as they should be. But um, I asked Brian if he could unveil a collection which could be a lot more affordable to the average fan. And once again, I'm grateful that he's done this. We've sold quite a few of all the other ones. There's, uh, as I say, there's the People Are People one, which we unveiled last week. And I'm very, very proud of this, this collection. Right, guys, so I say these are £65 each, excluding postage and delivery, and we deliver them anywhere to you in the world. So, um, you know, do reach out to me and let me know which one you want to purchase. And as I say, whatever you want Brian to write on here, he will write on here for you. Uh, will. Will. This is, a, as I say, this is a, I'm so proud of this offer. Thank you so much, Brian. Right, guys, so this brings us to the end of the Black Celebration album review. And indeed, the end of the Brian Griffin Depeche Mode album review series. Brian, it's been such a pleasure and such an honor to have you on, on the channel. And um, I, as I say, guys, we're going to get Brian back on. We're going to be doing a question and answer thing with Brian. He's agreed to do a, um, a, a, a YouTube um, a live, what do they call it, a, a, a Q&A. Yeah, we're going to do a Q&A with you guys out there 
should be really interesting and very revealing, I'm sure. Your opportunity, I'll let you guys know um, when, when that's going to happen because Brian's off to China now. You're off to China now, Brian? Yeah. I'm off to China tomorrow. Yes, yeah, so we don't want to keep him up too late. Um, we're going to do the live YouTube um, video, um, you know, where you ca- guys can interact with us and ask Brian any questions you want to. But until then, guys, I want to thank you so much for your support. I want to thank you once again, Mr. Griffin. And I would bless you. And I'm going to give you another toast. Well done. Guys, thank you so much for all your support. And we will see you again on Piano Keyboard Artist. Mm -hmm.